Hi, I'm Brian from Antics Auto, and in this video, we're going to discuss the Toyota GR86 and Subaru BRZ oil pressure drop issues that many owners have been concerned about. We're going to share our findings with our very own 2023 Subaru BRZ and our recommendations for mitigating the issue. For those that don't know, there have been several cases of the second generation BRZ and Toyota GR86 with engine failures on track. So far, this only seems to affect owners on the track. We took interest in this issue because our own BRZ was specifically purchased to be used on track, and we wanted to ensure our engine wouldn't suffer the same fate. Our data was logged using the Race Chrono software with an OBD Link MX and our own Ansix Auto oil pressure sensor kit, sending data to the CAN bus network. Our first collection of data was at the Ridge Motorsports Circuit in Shelton, Washington. Here's what we were dealing with. After seeing such significant pressure drops, we made some very intentional changes to our car and we went specifically to a clockwise circuit to test them out. This is Vancouver Island Motorsport Circuit, also known as VIMC. It's a clockwise circuit with some interesting right-handers. Here's turn three, a very fast 120 km per hour apex right-hander, turns four through six, a long 270 degree 10 second long right-hander, and turn 10, a cresting right-hander. Let's start off with some results. See the link below for the full lap. Our goal with the changes was twofold. Firstly, we wanted to increase the overall oil pressure that we're supplying to the engine. Secondly, we were aiming to reduce the occurrences of the substantial pressure drops and their severity. We think we managed to do both. It's not one magic bullet, but multiple purposeful changes. Let's first dive right into the data. For this first plot, the data is captured from a single hot lap. The blue data set is with all the modifications we made, and the orange data set is before the changes. On the x-axis, we have engine speed, and on the y-axis, normalized oil pressure. Since the data was taken with different average pressure, we had to normalize the pressure data. This means that the pressure values were divided by the average pressure of that data set, excluding the pressure drop data. Here, you can clearly see a reduction in the magnitude of the pressure drops after the changes were made. Particularly, the lack of instances where the pressure drop was less than 60% of the average pressure. The same cannot be said with the data set before the changes. Before changes were made, we saw pressures drop below 30% of the average pressure. This next plot shows the same oil pressure data relative to the cornering g-forces. Here on the x-axis, we have lateral g-forces. On the y-axis, normalized oil pressure. Consistent with other form discussions and videos, the pressure drops mainly occur on right-hand turns, so therefore negative lateral g-forces on this chart. Our car pulls approximately 1.4 g pretty regularly, and the pressure drops seem to get worse as the lateral g-forces increase. Let's move on to the next chart to better summarize the previous chart. What you can see here is how often the pressure drops dip below a certain threshold. Only data where the lateral acceleration is greater than 0.5 g in either direction is accounted for here. After the changes we've made, the pressure doesn't drop below 60% of the average oil pressure. Before the changes, we saw pressures as low as 30% of the average oil pressure. To give you an example, if your average oil pressure is 60 psi, dropping to 30% of that would be 18 psi. It's also important to note that the frequency of the oil pressure drops. After the changes we made, the instances of dropping below 70% is reduced from 16% of the time to just 4% of the time. How did we improve the oil pressure situation? Let's start by summarizing the relevant modifications in the car before. Previously, the car was running on 5W30 Pennzoil Ultra Platinum Oil. The car had our Ansix Auto Oil Baffle and the Jackson Racing Radiator and Oil Cooler Combo installed. The oil pickup had been cleaned from all the excess RTV from the factory. Our car runs 255, 35, 18 Bridgestone RE71 RS tires, which generate a lot of lateral grip, further exacerbating the oil pressure issues. Now I'll go over all the changes we've made one by one and the rationale behind making those changes. On the previous setup, once the oil temperature leveled out at 115 degrees Celsius on track, the oil pressure was around 45 PSI. This was lower than we'd like and we set out to improve this. We found that part of what caused this low average oil pressure was the substantial pressure drop caused by the Jackson Racing Radiator and the oil cooler combo. 
In our testing, we found that the Jackson racing cooler had a 30 PSI pressure drop across it. However, since we needed the additional cooling from the stock configuration, what we did was we removed the stock heat exchanger and kept the Jackson racing cooler. By doing this, we were able to increase the oil pressure by about 10 PSI. Thankfully, removing the stock heat exchanger did not increase our oil operating temperatures, even though the ambient temperatures were similar. With this oil cooler arrangement, our oil temperature never exceeded 120 degrees Celsius for a 20 minute session on a 26 degrees Celsius day. The next change that we made was to the oil weight. Given our oil temperatures that we were seeing, we decided a 40 weight oil at track temperatures would better match the viscosity of the recommended 20 weight oil at street driving oil temperatures. We went with the Motul 8100 XS 5W40. With this change, we saw an increase of oil pressure of about 6 PSI compared to the 30 weight oil. This increase would be even larger coming from a 20 weight oil. This pressure increase will be dependent on oil temperature. Finally, we added a 2 quart AccuSump oil accumulator installed with these ANSYX auto mounts that attach to the stock diagonal strut braces. If you're unsure of how oil accumulators work, just click on the link I've put in the description. Basically, the AccuSump stores pressurized oil. When the oil pump can't supply enough oil, the AccuSump discharges oil to supply the engine until the oil pump catches up. Keep in mind, it can only provide oil for however much volume it has stored. Our two quart AccuSump managed to keep our oil pressures very reasonable through turns four through six, which is about 10 seconds of very hard right hand cornering. We tested the car with different fill levels and found that the best results was with 0.5 liters overfilled when measured when the AccuSump was charged up. This didn't seem to cause any oil blow by, but helped reduce the oil pressure drops more than without the overfill. Lastly, the Ansix Auto Oil Baffle. Since this was installed both before and after the test, we don't feel that the baffle will help mitigate the pressure drops. However, we have noticed that without the oil baffle, having a slight overfill can cause some oil to get into the PCB system. With the baffle installed, we were able to overfill to about 0.5 liters without seeing the oil burn out and produce a lot of smoke in the next startup after our track session. As mentioned earlier, this small overfill allowed us to have a small improvement with the oil pressure drops. Our recommendations. Oil cooler. Although we have the Jackson Racing Radiator and oil cooler combo, we would recommend using an air to oil cooler, specifically one with low pressure drop. The Jackson Racing Radiator Cooler Combo has such a high pressure drop that we simply can't recommend using it. Regardless of what cooler you choose, we suggest using it without the stock heat exchanger to eliminate a necessary pressure drop in the oiling system. Oil. For track situations, we believe the factory recommended 0W20 is not a good option. For street use, that oil should be just fine. Instead, we recommend using a high quality, full synthetic 40 weight oil if you plan to track regularly. Using anything that's not fully synthetic will not provide as much production in low to no oil flow situations. Oil level. In our testing, having 0.5 liters extra oil above the max line helps reduce the pressure drops even further. It may be possible to overfill even more, but it could have unwanted side effects. Proceed with caution on that front. If you do decide to overfill without a baffle, it's likely you'll get oil in your intake. It'll probably smoke up in the next startup after a track session. AccuSump. As previously mentioned, the AccuSump will help supplement the engine when the pump is starved. There's other testing that's been done on other cars which show similar results in helping prevent oil pressure from dropping too low. We believe the AccuSump is responsible for the reduction of the occurrences and the magnitudes of the oil pressure drops. Baffle. Having the baffle will allow for a slight overfill without the oil getting into the intake via the PCV system. We don't believe the baffle will directly aid in reducing the oil pressure drop situation. Additionally, make sure your oil filter is changed regularly and the oil pickup is not clogged with RTV. Where do we go from here? We were hesitant to test not using the AccuSump at VIMC Motorsport Circuit due to all the hard right-handers. However, we will be doing additional testing at Area 27 Motorsport Circuit in September. There, we will test the car with and without the AccuSump active so we can directly compare the effects of just having the AccuSump. If there's interest, we can put together a follow-up video discussing our theories as to what's causing the engine blow-ups, why it hasn't happened to us yet, despite our low oil pressure, and why it seems to be an issue with just the second generation cars more so than the first gen. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified when we upload that. We want it to be concise in this video, but if there's any specific parts you'd like us to elaborate on, just drop a comment below. Feel free to suggest a topic for another video or just ask us any questions. 
You can check out our links to our GR86 and BRZ products below.